Everybody free? Yes. Free to be? Yes. Free to be me. Say that. Free to be me. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Super Bowl's over. One of the best Super Bowls around, depending on how old you are. Valentine's Day is over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we have to get back to business. You know, uh, what are we talking about in uh, November? What is it? February. Thank you. What are we talking in February? Divine discomfort. <laughs> wow, that's a heavy topic. You know, and Reverend Alice has been talking about some heavy things, right? The last couple of weeks. Well, I'm just going to add more to it. <laughs> so it'll all be good. So let's get our spiritual uh, shoes on. And repeat after me. I am love. I am fantastic. I have limited, unlimited... <laughs> Possibilities. I am divinely created by spirit. And with that creation, I manifest greatness. I am free. And so it is. Okay. So the topic was very interesting. Passion pushes, no, uh, pain pushes, passion pulls. And I got to tell you, I was a little divinely uncomfortable <laughs> with this topic. I mean, what's that got to do with religious science or science of mind or, or anything like that? We don't think that there's pain, but there is. There's lots of pain in the world. And I didn't get it. I didn't realize what this topic was really about. And coincidentally, I happened to come across a minute-long interview with Oprah and Dr. Michael Beckwith. Okay? And Oprah asked him the question, some question. He goes, oh, that's my favorite topic to talk about. Pain pushes, passion pulls. Thank you, God. That's awesome. You did my talk. There you go. And what he means by that is the universe continues to push, 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 push you until you can articulate a clear vision, a clear purpose, a clear possibility. Think about that. Anybody been pushed recently? And what does that feel like? Ah, uncomfortable. I'm not ready. I'm not safe. See, pain, I, when I, before I started the talk, I, I thought pain was, this topic was only about physical pain. And, and I go, how do I explain to somebody who has chronic pain? How do I explain this? And then I realized this was not just about physical pain. This is pain of many levels. Pain of Losing your house, pain of losing your job, pain of losing your spouse or a loved one or a relationship or something even more deep. Pain is an emotional pain. Pain is spiritual pain. Pain is physical pain. There's someone that I, um, there's someone I know and She's gone through a divorce. And it's a very painful divorce. And the sadness is that she is going to lose 50% of her time with her daughter. Because that's what happens in a divorce. You never think about it that way. You know, one person gets the kids and then another gets... But if, if you're a mom, and now the universe is saying, I want to take 50%, of your time with your daughter, that's pain. And how do I tell this person in 10 years or five years, it's going to be OK? You're going to have more potential, more possibilities, more newness, and you're going to be a better person for it. 
But why are you in pain? Oh, 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 that's the last thing you want to hear. Somebody going, yeah, 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 yeah. it's going to be fine. The idea of vision and purpose is that your vision, your potential, is always going to be greater than your pain. Your potential. Because potential is infinite. Infinite is God. Infinite possibilities. Your possibilities, your potential to be a better you. I think of Dave Friedman whenever I say that, a better you. You're going to be a better you for the experience that you have to go through. Now, we're not saying there's no pain in the world. That's BS. There's a lot of pain in the world, right? It's everywhere. The Buddhists know it. They teach it. They say, deal with it. Well, what do we say? What, what does our teaching say about pain? Come on. People on the round table, you're not excluded from this. I'm just, <laughs> just letting you know you're part of the conversation. What is your highest potential? The infinite potential allows you to grow. But when you grow, you have to do what? You have to make space, make space for what's coming in. The universe doesn't like two things button heads. So as soon as you let go of one, whoosh, something could come in. Um, I want to read you a quote or two or three, or four. Um, actually, the first one's by Michael Beckwith. Not all pain is negative. Even though we label all forms of pain as such and resist them, positive negativity is a circumstance that causes us to go deeper, to search ourselves to stop placing blame on the causes of suffering outside of ourselves and take responsibility. That's one of the key things that I think we, our teaching is different than so many other teachings is that we're asking you, the individual, the individualized expression of God to take responsibility for your actions. How does that feel? Does that feel scary? Or liberating? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Power. power. Feels like power. Empowering. Powering. Okay. So this, this is another quote by Beckwith. Suffering is a great awakener. Human beings go through excruciating circumstances. Oh my God. Have some people in this congregation gone through some excruciating circumstances? He didn't say that, but that's it. You will often hear individuals describe how their lives were changed for the better because of them. Suffering has its own gifts that are different, but equally as valuable as the gifts that happiness gives us. We never think of the gift of struggle or the gift of pain as being useful, do we? You, you do? Okay. Inspiration is a great thing. Okay, but what about when you're right in the middle of pain and you can't focus? Surrender. Surrender. You know, that's why we have practitioners here on Sunday. <laughs> okay? Uh, I, I mean that seriously because when you're in pain, you don't cl see clearly, you don't think clearly, you don't believe clearly that your potential, your divine potential, is going to be realized, right? So what does a practitioner do? They see your highest good. They don't believe your BS about why you are the way they are. They go, oh, no, you're just perfect and whole and complete, and this is what I think. You know, they pray for you. That's our kind of prayer, right? That's pretty powerful. And this last little one is life will only change when you become more committed to your dreams than you are to the comfort zone. 
and that's by Billy Cox, and I don't know who that is. Does anybody know who Billy Cox is? Well, I gave him a quote. The, 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 the idea is to walk towards the, the direction of your divine purpose. Walk in that direction. Don't walk away from it. Walk towards it. Because when you walk towards that, there's a good chance that that spiritual two-by-four will not hurt as much when it hits you on the side of the head. Okay? Spirit's always talking. Come on, come, come on. Hey, 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 hey. I did it real quietly. I did it real softly. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it louder. Come on, come on, come on. It reminds me of this terrible joke. i got to tell you, I'm not good at jokes, but I'll tell you a terrible joke. This man, he's in his house and it starts raining and it's like the you know, hundred year flood and the water's coming up and they tell everybody in the community they have to abandon their homes because the water's rising very quickly, right? And uh, he says, fine. So uh, the water's rising and, and now it's up to his front porch and there's a rowboat that comes up and somebody says, hey, come on, get in, get in, get in. Your house is going to get flooded. He goes, oh, no, 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 it's okay, I'm good. I'm going to wait for God to help me. Okay, so the rain gets higher and higher and higher, and now it's on through the top floor, and along comes a big boat. He says, come on, I'm the army. Get out of the house. Got to go. No, 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 that's okay. God will help me. By now, he's got to get up onto the roof because the water's so high, he's going to drown. And along comes a helicopter and says, hey, buddy, get up here. We'll save you. He goes, no, 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 it's okay. God will help me. And then he dies. And he goes up to heaven and he says, God, I asked for your help and you didn't answer. And God says, oh, come on. I sent you a boat, I sent you a helicopter. What more do you want? Think about it. How many times has spirit given you the answer that you wanted, well, what spirit that you needed, and you go, no, 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 I know better. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. No, 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 I know better. You're just God. It's all right. No problem. Anyway. One of the first things that we need to do is forgive. Now, we talk about forgiveness a, a ton. But forgiveness makes space. It makes space for us. It makes space in our heart. It makes space in our families, in our relationships. It makes space so we can become aware that there's a better solution, a better answer, a better proposition, whatever you want to call it. So newness could come in. When you become aware by forgiving, you begin to change in a positive direction. Change in a positive direction. Not listening to your, no, you can't, no, you can't, no, you can't. And you listen to, yes, I can, yes, I can, yes, I can. What's my divine potential? Yes, I can, yes, I will. Yes, I will trust. You know, I don't feel safe. I don't like change. If it upsets my apple cart. I don't know about you, but I don't like change if it upsets my apple cart, if it upsets my routine. If, if I'm doing things and all of a sudden the national park uh, put in a, a, what do you call it, a circle in the entrance to Yosemite, I didn't like that. And then I realized, oh, this is for the better. My first reaction was, ugh. We have to feel safe, and we feel safe when we allow new thoughts, new consciousness, new thinking to come into our hearts and into our lives. When, for, when we forgive ourselves, that's when that happens. Do you know what the um, highest form of self-abuse is? Hi, think about it. What, what would you call the highest form of self-abuse? Not loving yourself. Not loving yourself? Not honoring yourself? 
sinful? Think about it this way. When you have an upset, and you, or you get in an argument, you're creating these amazing toxins in your system. Okay? Now, those toxins can sit there for 16 to 24 hours in your system. So yeah, you're done with the argument. Whoa, I'm done. Okay, we're fine. We're in agreement. But there's something inside that keeps on stirring and it keeps on chemicalizing and keeps on manifesting until the next time. So if the next time is less than the 24 hours, you're going to get more upset. And if the next time is less than 24 hours, it keeps on growing. So self-abuse is allowing that toxins in your body to stay there. It's like telling the universe, hey, I want more. Give me more toxins. Hey, right here. Send it my way. More, 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 more. And we got to break that cycle. I want to, uh, there's a couple people that I want to talk about. Now, these are extremes of people that have gone through some really tough times in their life. J.K. Rawlings, you know, author of Harry Potter. She went through a depression. I think she still goes through depression. Serious depression and financial ruin when she was younger. That was her story. And what did she become? A famous author. Nick Vujic. I think I said it wrong, but Nick is that motivational speaker that is born without legs and arms. I don't know if you've seen him, but holy moly, to see this man in action, and he's limp, jumping up on things, and he doesn't have any legs, he doesn't have any arms, and he's talking about empowerment. Empowerment. How to live a better life. How to not take things for granted. How to be the best you that you can be. His vision, his person, purpose is greater than his pain. Oprah Winfrey, we know a lot about Oprah's background. Teenage girl, black teenage girl in Mississippi, unmarried, suffered sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse. That's her story. So what is she talking about? Empowerment. She's one of the greatest media Giants, I think, in, in the world. She goes by the first name, like our pet, see? <laughs> you just have to say Oprah, and you know what we're talking about. Okay? And then the last one is Malala. Remember Malala? Yeah. Yeah. She was, uh, I don't know, was it uh, Afghan? You think it was Afghan? Yeah, Afghan female student that was in school, that was shot point blank in the head by the Taliban, and survived. And what is her power and her passion? Active, act, activism. No, that's where my son works, active. <laughs> Thank you, activism. She's an activist in the world talking about educating women giving them the right to an education all over the world. Ha! Ah, these are powerful people. But your pain doesn't have to be that dramatic. Your pain can be small, too. Or it could be in the middle. The key to know is that you have divine potential. You, have, you can be more than you can. You can be more. Bottom line. You can be more. So, I'm taking a risk here, and I'm going to show you a video. It's a meditation. It is 10 minutes long, and I want to talk about it afterwards. Okay? Now you could, it'll tell you in the beginning. You could do it two ways. You can keep your eyes open and watch it, or you can close your eyes and listen and do it. It doesn't matter. If you're, you don't like meditating, watch the pic pretty pictures. If you like meditating, give yourself a chance to go deeper on a Sunday. Okay? Ready, Mary? This is a guided meditation for acceptance. <laughs> 
featuring the song Surrender to the Love. This guided meditation is designed to deepen your experience of acceptance in any area you desire. Our guided meditations are designed to be used in one of two ways. One, simply close your eyes and listen. Or two, keep your eyes open and use the images to aid and enhance your guided meditation experience. Enjoy! a breath, I allow myself to relax into my chair. Breathing in, breathing out, I accept the support of my breath, my chair, my mind, and this meditation. Right here, right now, I am creating a safe, space within. Now I allow an area in my life where I have been experiencing resistance come to mind. Just one thing, the first thing that enters my mind. As I see this area of resistance before me, I notice if it has a shape. fragrance, a feeling state, good, and now I ask the divine mind within to show me if there are any actions I need to take in relation to this area of my life. Now I ask the divine mind within, what actions are not mine to take? What do I not need to do in relation to this area? And is there anything I have been doing that I need to release? Now I ask the Divine Mind to strengthen my knowing of what is and isn't mine to do moving forward. I ask 
ask the divine line to strengthen my acceptance of what I cannot change. I ask the divine mind to strengthen my courage to change what I can. And I ask the divine mind to strengthen my wisdom to know the difference. I allow myself to open to this strength now as the music leads me into a space of contemplation. As I can. Here's what I need you to know. We have to believe that we have the courage to move in the direction of our purpose. We have to believe that we have the courage to move in that direction. We have to believe that spirit will be there on every step of the way as you step forwards. We have to love ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves. And we can't be afraid of tomorrow. One thing I've noticed as I've gotten older is my purpose has changed many times. I don't have one purpose. I don't have one vision anymore. It used to be I was going to be a uh, creative artistic director and, and a scenic and lighting designer and a teacher. I did that. I worked in theater for 45 years. Then I moved on to teach, speak, and preach. I became a minister. So I'm still teaching and preaching and speaking. Then retirement came and I said, what do I want to do now? I'm living my passion. 
through photography. My passion. It doesn't get any better than this. And I get paid for it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So I have a question. Did anything come up with anyone? Not, not, you're not alone. If you ask a question, it's okay. Ignore the camera that millions of people are watching. It's, it's okay. It doesn't matter. But if you ask a question and make a statement, there's a good chance there's somebody else in here. And that's going to your higher purpose and higher passion because you're passing that along to someone else that can grow from your experience. That's what it's about. So, do I have one, two, three people, or zero? Oh, nobody wants to volunteer. All right, no volunteers? Then my talk is done. Namaste. <laughs> All right, you can talk to me privately afterwards, but let's just do a quick prayer and know that we are divinely blessed, divinely God in every step of the way. We are not alone. God is by our side. Spirit is by our side. And our future is there for the taking. Our future purpose is there for the living. There is so much more life left. And if not now, when? When? Seize the moment. Move forwards. And be the best you that you can be. And so it is.